uh, or in massage, in touch, that really fascinates me. Uh, it's difficult to put into words. I know personally that when I become very present in, in my hands and doing the work, that I, I'm getting in touch with some kind of force, some kind of presence that is, has nothing to do with my presence. It's almost like I, can't, I don't feel my body anymore because my body is light. Um, I can hardly feel my hands, but my hands are moving along. And um, I, they don't need my mind to function anymore. I've just become very light. And at that point, I get in touch with something wonderful. For more than a decade, students from all over the world have come to Santa Fe to study at the New Mexico Academy of Healing Arts. For many, it has been a time of transformation in their careers and in their lives. I think the thing that really um, brought me into the field is my own um, need to look at the way I was living my life in terms of stress, managing stress. and then seeing people also trying to struggle with that same issue of how to live life sanely. <laughs> I was a computer programmer uh, for, for a long time uh, before having done this. Uh, and I wanted to try something a little bit different, so I came out to take the summer programs. And I was just ex so excited and I really got into it so much that I decided to, to make a, uh, a full-time career of it. And took the whole program. I believe that the school's approach is a wonderful way of teaching. Literally, my life changed when I came to massage school. I used to be an accountant in Europe, and uh, I came to school. The idea was to learn about massage, but I really learned a lot about myself and, of course, about other people. For me, the, the experience at the school was tremendous. It was it was a change in my life. Um, it's like I was at a time in my life where I needed to make a big step, a big transformation, and going through the school really helped me through it. So it was not only learning massage, it was a personal growth. I was involved in publishing in magazines, and there's a certain lifestyle and, and just that went along with that. And I was really looking for a real turning point, and I, I feel that just being in New Mexico, in particular Santa Fe, and the school itself pretty much did a, an incredible shift in my life. New Mexico, especially Santa Fe, has a deep tradition as a place of spirit and inner life. Music and art flourish here, and today it is known throughout the world as a center of holistic healing. There's a very strong power just in the land in Santa Fe, in the atmosphere in Santa Fe, and this, this is not something that's imaginary. People who live here feel it, know it, there's energies in the land and in the, in the atmosphere here that work with people in their evolution. So to go to a school that's, that's committed to personal evolution and to live in a town that demands personal evolution, the combination is very dynamic and very powerful. The New Mexico Academy offers professional training in massage therapy, polarity therapy, manual therapy, and other healing arts. Courses range from weekend workshops and short programs in a broad spectrum of holistic healing disciplines to certification programs in massage and polarity therapy. Students learn more than body work here because this is a school that acknowledges the whole human being. The three cornerstones of the school are meditation, service, and holistic massage therapy. We desire students who want to learn massage from a holistic perspective. They want tools to be able to address their client's emotional body, their thinking body, their spirit, address them physically, certainly. So we provide a training that addresses the holistic aspects, the, the full nature of the client, their mind, their spirit, their emotions, and their physical body. Massage is such an intimate experience and such an intimate exchange of energy that 
if I don't know who I am as I come to you, I will get involved in you. So it, it's, um, I think, to build a strong sense of self and who I am is something that I see as, a, as part of the philosophy. I must say this is a very unique school of massage. It's uh, much more than a school of massage. The, I feel the people in charge in the staff are very much geared towards making it a university of life, teaching people about life, teaching what, exactly what they cannot learn at the university. So it's a very special school for that. I've worked with people who have graduated from other schools, and there is a very distinct difference in the style of body work. Without trying to make value judgments, it's a whole lot different. Uh, we, we go very deeply into the entire entity, the entire being that we're working with. It's not mechanical. Uh, we, le we learn the mechanics, but as well, the, the whole person. You're touching the person on many, many different levels. In, you know how to find it, right? If there is any tendonitis. In teaching massage therapy, one sure sign is it is it really involves the whole person because a massage therapist is working with a whole person. They're working with that person's muscle pain and tension, their stress, which is related to their lifestyle, it might be related to emotional issues. So, first of all, a massage therapist needs to uh, develop compassion and understanding for the clients that they're working with. They also need to develop interpersonal skills. What that necessitates is that the massage therapist get in touch with themselves. What goes on in a massage school in a year of study is that a person goes through a lot of personal confrontation. They have to get in touch with themselves, their own emotional issues, their own physical issues. There's also mental issues that come up too. So in that training, the massage therapist is addressing all those issues together. So it is very, the education is very holistic in that sense. If I am comfortable with my own emotions, I can create a space of comfortability for the client. If I'm not comfortable with my emotions, I'll tend to repress someone else's expressions of those emotions. So in terms of creating a holistic therapist, that therapist has to make a vow, if you will, that they are in the business also for their own personal growth, that they're going to spend a part of their life paying attention to their personal growth. That goes back to an ancient naturopathic axiom, physician, heal thyself. When the body gets touched, it starts processing. So there has to be ways to stay in balance with that um, because it's powerful when the body starts releasing locked in emotion, it's a very powerful and moving experience and it can really throw someone out of balance. So we work um, early on in the semester, we work with nutrition, we work with herbology, we work with, um, let's call it psycho-emotional, mental, emotional, and even spiritual ways to stay in balance, such as meditation, creative visualization, progressive relaxation. So they're, they're given these models early on in the semester and really it it helps things function harmoniously all around, not just the students. They're taking care of themselves better, but the energy stays more in balance so that the school, as a living organism, doesn't get out of balance. Right out there. So that's where the acromioclavicular joint is. And then the sternoclavicular joint is the only place where the whole upper extremity and the shoulder girdle attaches to the core or the axial part of the skeleton. And that's right I think they'll go much further beyond massage techniques if they come here. <clears throat> they'll have a perspective about health, which, which is a true perspective. You know, health and holy have the same root. So they'll have an understanding of holistic life, how the body really works, how the emotions, the spirit connect to the physiological functions and manifestations and how to empower themselves, find ways to improve themselves, improve their lives. Maybe you could, in English, you could call it a school of self-expression. Holistic principles influence every aspect of study at the New Mexico Academy, shaping the school's philosophy, its curriculum, and its classroom approach to learning. In designing the curriculum and in how the school functions, we really try and model as many different paradigms and metaphors 
that, that um, show the students how the body functions in a healthy way. So when we go about designing the curriculum, organizing the school, administration, all different levels of functions, we correlate it with different parts of the body. One thing that I'm impressed about the style of learning at the academy is that it really tries to um, balance both hemispheres of the brain. Regular education in the United States is, is very left-brained. And, um, and so I see, like, our attempts at the academy to really balance that out. And so in the courses that we teach, we do a lot of hands-on, color, music, light, sound, meditation, all kinds of practices, not only to, to balance out right and left hemispheres, to stimulate the right hemisphere and to assist the left hemisphere in the, in the learning process. I've really been impressed as a student how much that was helpful because I, I am very left-brained, uh, being sort of a, a scientist in a sense. Um, and then began to see how much more my um, retention was. Six months later, I could remember 90% of my muscles, origins and insertions, and I hadn't had that experience with, uh, with uh, regular, you know, left brain learning techniques. And I think it was because I've col I colored, I drew on bodies, I palpated, I felt, I made clay models. You know, I was just involved, my whole body was involved in the process, not just my, my cerebrum. I think the school's gone beyond my expectations. It's, uh, I've just learned so much over the five-week program that I had that, I, I mean, I thought it would take so much longer. The pace is very fast, yeah. They move along very quickly. Uh, I still have to learn a lot more anatomy, though, and that's something I'm kind of scared about, but I would assume it must be like med school or something. What the how in-depth you actually go. They teach in an interesting way as well. You will use live models as well as uh, skele skeletons. And what they do are actual palpations where you're actually feeling the muscles that you're speaking of. And that really helps you out a lot because later on when you're doing your massage, you know what you're working with. The muscles next to the spine is to go right next to the spinous processes. One of the other things that I work with is really confidence building in my, in my class. Many people come into an anatomy class and they're very intimidated because they think they're going to have large words, which they do, uh, large vocabulary to learn, and that it's going to be difficult to memorize. So they come in with a preconceived notion that this is going to be a hard class and that this is the hardest class, and I wonder if I can do it. So I really work with affirmations and confidence building and helping the students just um, realize that they can do it, that anybody can learn this, that it's right here, it's their body, and they can learn from their body and with their body as they're going through my class. I use a lot of different techniques to make it easier for the students to learn so that we do palpations, we do visuals, we look at slides, we look at overheads, we feel on our own bodies, they listen to the lectures. We have all kinds of different tools so that people can use their strongest senses. Some people are very kinesthetic and they learn primarily through the kinesthetic sense, through feeling, through movement. We do a lot of movement. Some people are very visual. Most of us are very visual. So I have a lot of visuals happening that help people remember with a visual image. Um, some people are primarily auditory and what I would recommend to them is to make tapes of their voice or to speak out loud and review the material that way. So I try to emphasize using your primary sense to help you learn. The Academy's massage therapy program is known as one of the best in the country. In addition to learning professional massage therapy techniques and sciences, students develop a wide variety of complementary skills. A typical day might look um, starting off with some kind of movement or something more still and quiet that encourages um, awareness of what's happening inside our own skins. Um, so we do that in a variety of ways and usually move into a demonstration of 
some aspect of the, the technique. And after that, the students pair up and go to tables and do an exchange of practicing what they've learned in the demonstration that day. And at various points in the program, having opportunity to integrate all the parts as we go along, um, both within the massage class and within the other classes as well. So we have an eye on um, allowing students some opportunity to bring in their polarity skills, their medical massage skills, and combine that with their massage training. They're already strong in terms of structure in their body and what can be improved to support what's already strong in their body. The uh, so not looking for particular class that I teach is really looking at the body from the point of view of structure, like what's going on structurally in the body. That's one part of the class. Uh, we also spend part of the class talking about body-mind relationships and uh, also trying to understand the nature of uh, in intervention so that you can make a more appropriate intervention as a massage therapist. Body reading is not necessarily to learn how to fix something, but to learn how to consider the whole organism so that if you do have someone with a neck problem that you might notice that it's connected to everything else that's going in the body. And that's very important because someone, if you just work on someone's neck over and over again, you might give them temporary relief. But in order to affect a long-term change, you might need to address other issues in the rest of the body. Body reading can be extremely helpful in terms of uh, just knowing how to work with someone. It's a very important tool. Uh, I had someone visiting last week who had went to school here and is now in Washington, D.C., and they said that the class that they took on body reading really gave them an edge over all the other massage therapists in their uh, area because it's not something that's included always in uh, massage training. One of the things uh, I, I, I think is really important and uh, that the school does extremely well and is a emphasis on body language, body mechanics rather, <clears throat> the massage therapist as the person is working. It's very easy to injure yourself if you start working six, eight, ten, or even longer, or more hours in a given day. You have to do it right or you, your body breaks down very quickly. And I've been to uh, uh, sporting events, for example, where we do sports massage. And I went to uh, one place in New Jersey and there was a woman working on a table right next to me. And after a while, I asked her uh, where she learned uh, to do her work because I really appreciated how well she was handling herself, her own body mechanics. And it turns out we both went to the same school. More of a base. Now, instead of just using your arm as if it ended here, let's integrate a whole movement so that you move from your pelvis, and you can actually get your pelvis to do that movement. The aims of the movement class, the movement principles class, are to teach you those principles of movement that will allow you to do what you want to do as efficiently, with as little stress, as little trauma to yourself, and with as much benefit to the person that you are working on. Often people find doing massage after massage, you do a couple massages during the day, you find Oh, my shoulder, my back, my neck. You'll find all sorts of aches and pains that are particular to um, massage therapists. And the, the better that you use yourself, not only do you decrease the possibility of stress, of pain, of discomfort to yourself, but you also can access more information from the person you're working on. You will be able to use yourself better. They will feel this. They will feel um, there'll be less resistance from the person you're working on, and you will get more feedback from them, and you will be able to give them more. For example, if I start to do a massage like this, my shoulders up to my ears, my, everything coming from up here, I will tend to stiffen because I've, I'm stiffening my shoulders, my hands will be stiff, um, I will be using a lot of effort. The more effort I use, the less information I will get, the less information I give. If I can come from my pelvis, where all the power is in any movement, um, 
my arms will be more relaxed, my hands will be relaxed, I will be available to get more information from them, they will feel more from me. So it increases the sensitivity of my hands and it increases the possibility that I have an interaction with the person as opposed to doing something to someone. Anytime I come at them like this, they will get a feeling that they are being done to. And, the po and once they feel that, the possibility that they push back is very strong. Once it's an interactive sort of thing, so that there's a give and a take, a flow, it's more like a dance where I lead them, they follow, and you get much more of an interaction interactive thing happening. At the New Mexico Academy, another major course of study, one of the first of its kind in the country, is in the rapidly growing field of polarity therapy. This approach to wellness is oriented toward balancing energies in the human body. We teach students to work with energy fields through a lot of different models. One of them is, you know, a visual model of showing what the energy field looks like. A lot of that can be documented. There are actually pictures of energy fields through molecules and atomic movements and so forth. It matches up exactly to the energy fields in the, in the human body, as a matter of fact. Um, so through visual models, students can get an understanding of what the energy looks like in the human body. You really don't need to see it. Um, it's more of what you feel with your hands. And the hands can be trained to feel a physiological pulse or a vascular pulse, a blood pulse, as it were. And you can also train your hands to feel an energy movement that's sometimes felt as heat, warmth, tingling, pulsation. It's really quite simple. Every time you run, rub your hands together like this and then separate them and hold them apart, you will perceive something between your hands, which is just more than antagonizing the nerve endings. There is actually something else going on in there. Polarity is really a holistic system which looks at the, the mind and what role the mind plays in the body's health, the physical body and all it makes up the human system, the emotional aspects, how your emotional makeup goes to then filter down and create your physical body and the patterns that your body holds. So polarity deals with all of those levels of existence through diet, through stretching postures which are very similar to yoga and movement exercises, which gets the body to be flexible, both in the musculature, musculature, the skeleton, the joints. Also, nutritional aspects, what kind of food actually feeds the system, what is the best kind of diet, what nutritional supplements, what herbs, what cleansing techniques will allow the body, the mind, and the emotions to freely inhabit the physical system. Um, and also, certainly, what is probably most obvious about polarity is the bodywork techniques, the things that actually manipulate the energetic field, the patterns of energy as they run through the body, um, and the mind and the emotions. All of that can be affected through physical manipulation, through energy balancing techniques. So polarity is a whole of all of those particular parts making up one holistic, comprehensive healthcare system. The New Mexico Academy offers an innovative postgraduate program in manual therapy. Courses now include foundations of manual therapy, cranial therapy, and visceral therapy. Additional courses will be added as the program continues to grow. Manual therapy is a way of mobilizing the body, and this can mean in terms of the joints, the fascia, um, the muscles, the energetic systems within the body. And the basic idea is that if you improve mobility, then you're going to improve function and um, we're looking mostly for areas of lack of motion and by freeing those up we can restore balance to the body. The aim of the program in manual therapy is to assist therapists who are already working in, in body work or massage to be able to develop their skills so that they can be more precise in their assessment and um, to be more flexible in their treatment methods and so that they can use every resource available to them to be able to free up the body on many many different levels. And this work becomes very, very exciting, both for the practitioner and for the uh, client. And because it also touches into the emotional system, it has profound effects on individuals and, and helps them to blossom and, and uh, function much more happily and fully in life. 
As far as I know, at the moment, the Academy is the only school that's offering this program um, that brings in the um, skills from osteopathy and physical therapy and many other fields all into one program. The beauty of this work also is that it can be integrated into whatever professional background somebody already has. Um, for example, if somebody is doing massage or physical therapy or polarity work, then these skills can be integrated very well into what they're already doing and will enhance their results. Many students have already said that their, their palpation skills in their hands are already la greatly um, increased in sensitivity just as a result of the first course. A wide variety of short programs and continuing education courses at the Academy of Healing Arts offer specialized knowledge for both beginners and practitioners. I really try to develop the intuitive side in my teaching. We often will sit around a plant and we'll meditate with it. We will just see what we can discover from the plant's energy coming into ourselves. and then we will share those impressions together and see what comes up. And amazingly enough, many people come up with exactly what the plant's use is. So that people go out and they are really connecting with the plants, with the seasons, with the experience of their senses, so that they begin to wake up and discover a whole world of plants Maybe that really most of us are unaware of as we're walking along in our everyday lives. My philosophy of working with the body when I use herbs to help people is that I like to work very gently and nourish the body. In a sense, I get out of the way so that the, the patient, the so-called patient, can heal him or herself. I don't really believe in healers, per se. I use herbs to support the subtle workings of the body. I use herbs to gently nourish the body so that it can just heal itself. The whole idea of Twina really is to, to do the same thing as acupuncture. It's the same principle. It channels energy in the same way. Uh, what it has is it, it provides the opportunity for more intense care. I don't want to say intensive. I really mean intense personalized care in the sense that you have manipulations, and those manipulations allow you to promote energy, promote vitality, as well as the word na means to, to take out, to grab abnormalities. So people have and desired and wanted deposits somewhere, accumulations, and it's a way to deal with it too. So in other words, it's acupuncture plus manipulations. Well, with deep tissue, uh, the intention is to work on the what's called the myofascial system, which is the, both the muscles and the connective tissue that holds those muscles in place. And the fascia is the organ of support for the muscles. So we have tight muscles, but we can also have chronically shortened connective tissue that is going to keep those muscles held either uh, in a position of tightness and shortness or along with postural patterns that fascia will be distorted. So with deep tissue, what we do is use certain techniques to help lengthen the connective tissue and free it, free it from any binding. Trigger point therapy is another dimension of that um, that I teach within the deep tissue work. Trigger point therapy involves working with chronic myofascial pain patterns. These might develop if somebody has an overuse syndrome within their body, if they use one part of their body over and over in an occupation or a uh, musician or uh, even in athletics. Most simply, aromatherapy is the use of essential oils. They can be used in a variety of ways. The most uh, common way in the United States is through aromatic diffusion, where you use a particular diffuser, whether it's a lamp or a lamp ring or a micro diffuser. And basically, in the same way you would use incense, you use essential oils. And in massage therapy, that's really the real movement, as I see it in the United States, is uh, using um, a 
massage therapy as a way to apply the essential oils to, to somebody um, for whatever their particular disharmony is. Well, I feel like it's forever changing and evolving into different things because it is a therapy that's wide open for exploration, but I would say a particular thrust of mine is going back to the source of the um, botanical before extraction and, and understanding where the plant uh, lived and where it thrived and what its existence was and what it looked like. You know, um, there's, there's something that the plant shares with you, you know, while it's growing in, in, in the earth. And to further capture that through distillation um, sort of magnifies that. Manual lymph drainage is a special massage modality that deals with stimulating the lymph system to do its job, which is mostly defense um, against foreign invaders and also to keep the fluid level in the body at equilibrium. It's really different than regular massage in the sense that it is very rhythmical and repetitious. And it's very designed to plug into the parasympathetic system, which is a system in our body that, the nerve, part of the nervous system that helps us deal with the relaxation response. And so this system and its um, strokes are designed to stimulate that system and really it has a very calming, sedating effect, and that's when the lymph vessels function the best. Students are asked to include regular meditation as part of their study at the Academy of Healing Arts. This cornerstone helps students build a foundation of self-reflection as part of their professional skills. At our school, there's no one path for meditation. If a student is, is learning how to silence their mind and go inside for their own answers, we call that meditation. Um, also, we define meditation as the path of inner looking. And so when, when people think of meditation as a religious experience or meditation as a spiritual experience, for us it's really more practical. It's the constant moment-to-moment -moment practice of looking inward for our answers. How anybody does that is up to them. We desire to train therapists who are meditative therapists. Um, we are not interested in training people to be Buddhists or Hindus or Sufis or Christians or Muslims or Native Americans. We have no desire to make someone into a certain religion. We do have the desire to offer tools to our students, uh, meditative tools, um, and those tools do a couple of things. Uh, one strong thing that they will do is they will uh, provide an opportunity for the student to begin to go in or to continue to go in if they've already had a meditative practice, to go inside themselves for their answers. Another excellent aspect of a meditative lifestyle for a body worker is that once meditation flowers in a, stu in a person's life, it offers a number of fruits to the person. One of the fruits that it offers to a person is an unlimited supply of energy. It's not a personal energy. It's a cosmic energy. Call it whatever you will. Call it light. Call it love. Call it harmony. Call it peace. That energy becomes available to the therapist. And body work is a physical discipline. So we need to be strong physically. But if we rely on our own strength all the time, there tends to be a burnout in therapists. So if we can have a tool for us that, um, that we center ourselves, we meditate, we calm ourselves down, we go inward, we tap into this unlimited supply of energy, and we use that in the work. Service, another cornerstone of the academy, gives students an opportunity for personal growth and nurtures their professional development in a practical way. service program is part of the school that each student uh, can expect when they come to the school to be a part of. Um, and basically what it is, it's community. It's building community, uh, a feeling that I look after you, you look after me, um, I clean the school, um, I treat it as my own, I treat it as my home. And if you do the same, then we have a, a school that feels uh, better, feels like a community. One of the school's philosophies is 
it's a direct relationship how much the person is willing to grow and undergo change to how, how able they are to help another person heal and to grow. So with that in mind, I feel the, the service program helps the student grow through patience, through kindness, through loving care, willing to, to do things for other people, directly affects their ability to be present with somebody on the massage table. Service at the academy is given outward expression through the internship program, giving students hands-on opportunities for practicing their emerging skills. The internship program consists of the student clinic as well as the outreach program. And so basically what the internship program is, it it's acts somewhat as a bridge between st classroom studies and private practice. And so during that period, what we do in the internship program is we help students to cross that bridge. In addition to the practical aspect of doing body work on various members of the community, different ages and different uh, conditions, the students also have an opportunity to learn client-therapist interactions, to learn how to interview clients, how to take health histories and get information from the client, and also after the treatment to also to get additional information from them, uh, how the session went for them, and um, also how, how they can improve their work. The community outreach program is, is really very exciting. It, um, it encompasses a whole range of different opportunities for students. And so students can work in various settings in the community. They could work um, at Casa Real, a nursing home. Um, they could work at um, uh, the Rape Crisis Center, working with people with, um, who are suffering from trauma. Um, we also have an internship program at the youth shelter. We have one at a medical facility, a comprehensive care medical facility for low-income people. Um, we have a program working with people with HIV and AIDS. Uh, we have hospice program. We have a whole range of programs that offer students an opportunity to work in any of these settings. It's just such a rich experience. These people have so much of their life experience to share. Um, verbally as well as in their bodies, touching. I think it's such a, a rich experience for the students to actually put their hands on these people who have lived years and years on into their 90s. So there's a real learning that happens on a body level in the touch as well as in the verbal connection. There's a, a, a warmth and um, it's just delightful. Meditation, service, and holistic healing, the cornerstones of the New Mexico Academy give students a clear path toward learning professional skills in bodywork and other complementary healing arts. Taken as a whole, they offer a way to personal evolution through healing touch. One of the greatest satisfactions I get as a teacher is watching students go through somewhat of a personal transformation in terms of their relationship to anatomy and physiology, which also can relate to other areas of their life, which is they come in in a fearful state and leave often in a confident state and feel like, wow, I really know a lot and I can learn this. I think the thing I like best about the teaching and being part of this institution is a support system that I feel uh, not only from the, from the staff, from the administrative staff and from the teaching staff, um, feel a lot of support from the students and just a lot of enthusiasm. It's so different working with the adults in education, so they're there for a purpose and there's a lot of enthusiasm and that really um, gives me fire as a teacher. My favorite part about teaching is watching the students grow and change and interact with them during that process. My wish is that people, people learn a profession, of course. They learn how to be professional massage therapists, but they also, they also get to know themselves better. They become more loving individuals, more tolerant individuals. They become more service-oriented individuals. They have a desire to help in the healing process of the planet help with individuals' healing processes and their own. 
What I would hope that a student would gain at the end of their time with us is personal evolution. That would be my deepest wish. I think it's endless. There's so much to discover there. There's so much there that it's just like, yes, I want to do that because, because it's endless. There's, there's a lot that remain to be discovered and explored and, and uh, it's tremendous. Mm -hmm.